Hello. Shui here. I'm a carpenter based in Japan. Today, I'm building a shoe cabinet and a storage cabinet at the entrance. I shovel the snow before starting work. Snow is falling heavily this winter. My workshop is located a bit higher up the mountain, so it snows twice as much as in the neighborhood. I'm building a shoe cabinet and a storage cabinet. Since it is a shoe cabinet, it's usually a job for a cabinet maker, and I didn't expect to be in charge. But it seems to be a carpentry job this time, so I'm building them. Well, it's not my cup of tea to build an entrance cabinet. This time, I use ash for the exposed part, and laminated cedar for the hidden part. The counter will be installed above the shoe cabinet. I use solid ash for this. I'm starting work in the workshop. Usually, laminated wood is delivered to the job site. If there is a lot of ash, I first cut it in my workshop. I want to plane the edges with the planer and make the parts the same width without a difference of 1mm. It's hard to make the edges the same width with a hand plane and an electric plane on the job site. I'm making each part the exact size in millimeter and then transporting them to the job site. I have transported the timber. I start working on site. First, I draw the lines for the width, height, and depth of the actual dimensions. I draw from the lower to the upper area. I saw the baseboard for the shoe cabinet and storage cabinet. It's like a support beam. The shoe cabinet and storage cabinet are surrounded on three sides by walls. I put the baseboard slightly inside, just like a toe kick and a baseboard. I'm going to install the shoe cabinet and the storage cabinet on this. I use a butt joint for the baseboard. The shoe cabinet will hide the baseboard, since only a small portion of the bottom will be visible. I use a butt joint and screw it from the top. I made a small level difference between the floor and the kamachi, so the baseboard will have a small gap. So I chisel off that part first, then secure it. Since the baseboard is a base of leveling, I measure its height and straightness precisely. I now begin building the shoe cabinet. It is 900 millimeters high and 1.82 meters long. It's horizontally long. <laughs> The door will be installed on the front, so the inside will remain hidden. So I use cedar wood for the inside. I stack two boards each and cut the same parts. By doing so, both parts will be the same size, even if the cut point shifted about 1mm or 2mm. Even though the inside is hidden, you can see it when the door is open. So I sand the edges and finish them.
In general, building furniture is not a favorite for carpenters. The biggest reason is tools. Carpenters and cabinet makers use completely different tools. For example, wood cutting tools, and joinery tools, everything. Regardless, they must finish to the same standard as cabinet makers. So honestly, it's not my thing. Now, I fit the parts. To hold them, I use long clamps. Clamps makes assembling box shapes easier. You can adjust the positions easily, and the parts won't fall. I make it right angled. If the diagonal length is the same on both sides, it will be right angled. So I cut it precisely. Making it right angled is challenging. On the sides of the shoe cabinet, I use leftover planks from the stairwell ceiling. These are high quality timbers that are too good for shoe storage. The planks were just the right size. I use them on the back. I precisely adjust the shoe cabinet to the right angle, then secure the planks. This keeps the angle correct and prevents shifting. I have finished building the shoe storage, so I carry it to the entrance and just put it in place. It's easier if two people work together in a situation like this. I simply place it on the baseboard. As I might need to adjust its position later, I won't secure this at the stage. By measuring the remaining space, I build a tall storage cabinet. The material of the left tall storage cabinet is ash. The side is visible from the front door. Ash is difficult to handle. It is stubborn and difficult to cut. The blade gets caught. So I make sure to cut the side of the cutting position first. I am cutting the side first, but the blade has got caught again. If you remove half of the same portion, it won't get caught anymore. When cutting or planing ash, it smells strong. It is often said to smell like goat dung. Well, I have never smelled goat dung, but it might smell like this. However, the smoke disappears after a while, and it becomes beautiful after painting.
Now, I make terracens as usual. I drill the holes first. I make shallow terracen holes because the laminated wood is only 20 mm thick. I have also finished building the storage cabinet. As the storage cabinet is tall, we can't carry it from inside to the entrance. Through the sliding glass door on the back, we carry it outside and in through the front door. We install it in place, and the top and sides fit perfectly. It is unusual fitting a pre-made frame snugly into a building. Since there are two people, I push it with my feet, and my son moves it from the top. It is installed successfully. From this point on, I start securing. Since the inside of both cabinets will be hidden, I screw them directly from the inside. Additionally, I screw them from the bottom of the baseboard and to the walls. I'm now installing the countertop on the shoe storage. The cabinet maker joined two pieces of timber and made this countertop. It is 30 mm thick. Solid ash is less likely to get caught by a circular saw blade than laminated wood, even if the laminated wood is thinner. Laminated wood is built by gluing dozens of timber boards with different warping patterns. So if you cut where two or three are not matched, the circular saw blade can be caught. When ash is used as a solid wood board, or two boards are joined like this, it means they have been selected as a simple to work woods. This is why solid ash is easy to cut with a circular saw. Finally, I install the countertop. I apply a lot of glue, enough to secure it in place with glue alone. It can be screwed from below and from the storage cabinet. It will be well secured. I do my last job, Tarusen. There is a piece of solid ash that I cut earlier, which is easy to cut. I use this wood. I have made a lot of Tarusens before, but I think I have made enough ash Tarusens for a lifetime. Now, I insert my favorite tarusens.
The most important thing when using a torusen is to match the grain direction. Otherwise, the torusen will stand out. You can insert it at a right angle to the board's grain if you intend to use it decoratively. It makes the tarusen stand out. The tarusens are made from the same solid wood as the cabinet this time, so it doesn't need to stand out. I match the grain's direction. I have finished building the shoe cabinet and the storage cabinet. The quality is not the same as the cabinet makers, but the size fits perfectly. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.